Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Ask Your Pastors. I'm back with Pastor Mike. Uh, we had a previous conversation where we talked about uh, the newness, our new nature as Christians and what that means and how we how we should think about that in light of of the things we still struggle with. And so that was a great conversation. If you missed part one of this uh, of this conversation, you might want to check that out. Some follow ups to that. Mike, at the end of that conversation, we began talking about maturing as Christians and what does maturity look like? Uh, and I thought maybe this question would be one that we could we could have a conversation around, particularly yeah. Uh, for many of us, um, the focus of our Christian life can can easily come to be revolved around, I've got to stop sinning. I just, I need to sin less. I need to get rid of sin in my life. And uh, and I think you and I have talked enough to know that, um, and I know we like to talk in terms of of maybe the goal being pursuing love, loving more rather than sinning less. Uh, so so let's talk about that. Is our goal to sin less? Is our goal to love more? And what's the difference there? Yeah. So so I think, you know, for for me, what has happened over the years is is as a young Christian, as a teenager, so often youth groups and youth pastors and pastors around, we, they are trying to help us with our behavior. And and we're quite immature, you know, and so there is a there is kind of a focus on on, uh, hey, that, that's really not a good behavior in your life uh, because it, it produces bad fruit. Um, but, uh, you know, and so we get that. And, and I think it's, it's good to say, hey, we know sin. Sin is this thing that costs Jesus his very life. Um, and so sin is real. Um, and so it's, we don't want to lessen that. And I know that sometimes that's the, the flavor of things is people, if you don't take sin seriously. And, and so let's put sin where it belongs yeah. in the most serious place possible, which is in Jesus on the cross. That's what, that is the only thing that takes care of sin. But then we have this thing that because of imputed righteousness, because of imparted righteousness, I am now righteous with God. I am now rightly related to him. And so I am now freed from sinning and disobeying and being an enemy in my heart towards God to now loving God and to actually pursuing a right relationship with God. Yeah. Um, and then he sets us free in the world to now be rightly related to others. And so I think that if we, if we think about do I, is maturing in the faith more about sinning less or loving more, we have to ask a righteousness question. I'm supposed to now live as righteousness in the earth. I am now a piece of righteousness in the world. Yeah. So you're talking about righteousness then in a, in a different way. I mean, so, so the way you're talking about it, righteousness is not just me individually. If I get rid of all my bad thoughts, all my bad actions, all my, you know, all the things that I, I identify as this is sin, I need to get this out of my life, then I'll be righteous, then I'll be good. I mean, we know in one sense, I'm righteous because of what Jesus has done. And we talked in our last video about, and he has actually given me a new nature and there is righteousness in me. But but this relational idea that it's not just get sin out of me, but it, 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 it's about my relating to God and others in a different way. I mean, that's a that's a pretty big shift to, to turn the focus from getting rid of sin to how can I love others? Yeah. Um, you know, for me, it's, it's turned into to this, Donnie. It's, I, I'm asking the question more often, am I righteously related to this person or am I in an unrighteous state with this person? Yeah. Which means that I don't even have to be in a fight with somebody. I can actually discover something in my own self that goes, oh, I'm is something, something's awry. Something's, a, something's yeah. not right in this relationship. Yeah. So then I have to ask the question, if God has made me righteous, if God has given me all of the Holy Spirit and I have the grace of God upon me, what is the grace that he has given to me? So two things come to mind, the grace of repentance and the grace of forgiveness. And that is, that actually leads me back into loving relationships, acting with love in the world. So when we talk about maturing who we are, I think it has to come down to, okay, so I have relationships. Sin always is relational. 
sin is never just private and, in, and, and individual. It always affects our relationships. And so when it affects our relationships, we have been given the grace to either repent and turn back to a relationship, or we've been given the grace to forgive so that we can receive a relationship back. And those begin to move us towards acts of love and righteousness. Yeah. So one of the things that we've we've had the privilege this year, you and I of doing, we've been getting to spend some time with a, with a gentleman named Bill Thrall. Bill Thrall is part yeah. of a, a ministry called True Faced. He was one of the founders of the ministry. And um, some of our listeners may be familiar with him and, and some of the books like The Cure that they've put out. Right. Um, and Bill talks about this idea of, of our goal being to love, um, not just not to sin, but actually pursuing love. And one of the things that I heard him say, um, Mike, and I want to ask you about this because I hear it and, I, and there's still something in me goes, that goes, eh, I don't know. He says, he says, your, your true identity, your, at your deepest core, your nature now is to love. Your nature is to love God and love others. That's true of you. And, and so maturing is just living out of who you really are. And we talked about this in the last video a little bit, that nature piece. I still come up against a statement like that and go, yeah, but but when when someone close to me doesn't do this or doesn't do that or doesn't, I really want my way. You know, I really, that, that's really what's deepest in me. Help me think about that piece, because sometimes I go, I don't know that my nature really is to love my Speak yeah. to speak to that piece, our nature being to love and what we do when we again, when we find that dissonance in us. Yeah, so I think I think maybe a helpful word that Bill's used with me is he's, he, he says, don't use the word habits because habits always have a negative connotation. You know, like don't bite your fingernails. That's a bad habit. Yeah. Um, but he says patterns. And so what are the patterns that we learn to live with? And so we've had a long, a long life of learning patterns of living not righteously. And so then, then all of a sudden we have, I will admit, I have these thoughts. I would like to do this. And it's a loving thing. But then I immediately think, but I don't want to give up my afternoon or I don't want to go do this on Saturday. Um, and so there are some patterns to to, to our lives that, that we have grown to do. Uh, like, uh, I think I mentioned last time, the idea that I really like carbs yeah, and bread and, and bagels, bread and bagels, baby. <laughs> yeah. Bread and bagels, baby. Uh, I would take that. I mean, if I feel overwhelmed, give me cream cheese and a bagel, man. And I feel great. Um, but it's really not the best. You know, um, and so actually one way to deal with stress that's more helpful, more more loving towards myself might actually be to go run as opposed to eat up another bagel. Um, and so I would say that probably our life in Christ is very similar, is that we have opportunities to love. Um, now, I'm not talking about the opportunities to go beyond your abilities in, in your limitations as a human. Um, I'm not talking about going beyond boundaries. I, I, you know, we're just talking about, hey, I have in my home, I can love my wife and choose to do that, or I can choose to remain in a pattern of selfishness. However, if I trust new identity, if I trust who I am, I actually find that maturing and acting out of that heart to love the other um, actually does bring life to me um, yeah. more than the pattern to stay selfish. Um, and so then when I do stay selfish, I start recognizing there's a dissonance between what happens in my members, my hands, my feet, uh, my flesh, if you will, and internally who I am in, in, my, in my life. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think, um, you know, that's just important for us to think about. Yeah. Uh, because a, a question that really has challenged me about four or five years ago, somebody said, when do you give yourself permission to sin? Mm. Um, and uh, that has messed with me. Um, because I was like, no, no, no. Sin is what you choose in the moment. You know, it's like, I'm moving along. I'm trying to be good in my life. And then sin comes and, and I have an option right there in that moment. And they're like, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't think that's true. They, there's actually some mo moment that you gave yourself permission to sin the next time sin presented itself. Hmm. And I was like, oh, that's really, that's, that's not fair. 
Um, is that's actually what I thought is that's not fair because, uh, and so the more that I I've talked about that and kind of pro and I've actually been in a conversation with Bill Thrall about that. Um, and, and he says, if your new nature is loving, and we know that because first John tells us God is love. And if we have been given a nature that is now redeemed and in Christ and our identity is in Christ, we now are connected to that divine nature of love. And so it is our new baseline is to, yeah. is to love. Yeah. Um, but we have these other patterns and we know our lives can get overwhelmed and, and we've created patterns for living and patterns for deciding when to sin or not to sin. And we think that it's actually about sinning or not sinning. But let's go back farther to that place of, oh, I got really overwhelmed and now I gave myself permission. The next time I have opportunity to eat a bagel, I'm going to eat a bagel. Yeah. Um, but that didn't happen when the bagel was in front of me. That happened because yesterday I was in a meeting and I was super overwhelmed and I didn't have an answer and I felt like I was supposed to have an answer. Um, yeah. Now, the other question that Bill asked me recently was, when do you give yourself permission to act righteously or trust your new nature? Mm. Wow. And, and I was like, I think it's the same moment. And so when we're overwhelmed, we can, we can turn to patterns that we've learned, or we can say, go back to that second Peter passage that we referenced last time. Everything that God has for me for life and godliness has been deposited in me with faith. And this faith is an ever expanding faith that has goodness and mercy towards others and love. And it just, it's going to keep expanding if I trust it. Yeah. And so then I get to, to give myself permission. Yeah, that's really good. I think it so much comes down to trusting, trusting what God says is true about us as Christians, that something radical has changed about us. And as we trust that, and trust the newness, trust that our nature is love, then we get to then we get to step into the way of the spirit in the little moments of the day. Um, and I, and that, that may even be a be a helpful uh, just a practical action step for our listeners. I mean I will do yeah. this sometimes in the, in the you know early in my day just say, God help me today to walk in step with the spirit. Help me to to say yes to the spirit in the little moments of the day. Um, and how we define that saying yes to the spirit, though, I think what, what we're saying here, this is really helpful to me because it shifts the saying yes to the spirit means I'm not going to sin when I have opportunity to sin. Really saying yes to the spirit means I'm going to step into what's what my deepest core really wants, which is love, joy, peace, patience. That's what's in me. And I get to say yes to the spirit as he leads me in those ways, which produces joy, life. Um, I mean, obedience becomes a joy in that sense. Obedience isn't about right. putting off this other stuff and sucking it, you know, sucking it up to do the thing I'm supposed to do as a Christian, eating my vegetables kind of thing. It's a joy to to live in accord with the new nature God has put in me. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Cool. This is good. This is good stuff. Well, I think what you're saying, the way you're saying it is so good because it's a, you're saying it in a way that is when I say yes to the spirit, when I say yes to my new nature, when I say yes to it's, it's a saying yes, which is, is an e evidence of trust, right? It is. You're yeah. trusting this. Um, one of the passages that recently someone mentioned uh, was the Ephesians. Uh, I think Ephesians four, where we're, we're to put off the old self and to put on the new and uh, the nature of the language sounds like um going back to la our last session when we were talking about trusting that new nature it sounds like we're supposed to put something over the top of something that's old or something that's not not new um and uh, or or in our case we might be saying i'm going to cover up the sinfulness of my heart and put on jesus right um but they were talking about just understanding that word in the greek and it mm -hmm. actually um the language is let what's on the inside come forth to the outside as though you have new clothes on. And I, mm -hmm. and I thought that is like a totally different way to see this is they're mm -hmm. saying we're actually living our Christian life from the inside out because yeah. we've been made new, not trying to put all of the Christianity on the outside to see if we can get it on the inside. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and it's just a shift in the way that we live because yeah. we can actually look inside and, and go, God has actually changed my heart. And I, yeah. and I think that's, that's where we, we find ourselves trusting. So that's really good. That would be uh, we'll maybe close with this. Let me just read that passage for our, for our listeners. It is, yeah. So Ephesians four, um, Paul tells the Ephesians that the way you learn Christ and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus is to put off your old self, which belonged to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and be renewed in the spirit of your minds. So there's the spirit. He actually is renewing something in us and then to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. There's a lot in those verses, but but yeah. there is a newness in us. We've been recreated after the likeness of God to be all we were meant to be. And now the spirit is bringing that out of us. Um, so, hey, these are these are great thoughts. Um, I, I, Mike disappeared on me, so I'm going to wrap us up. Um, but I, I really have loved this conversation. I hope it's been helpful to our listeners. Um, we will. Um, we would love to hear from you if you have um, further questions that you would like to ask us, maybe future episodes, topics, or questions we could talk about in an Ask Your Pastors episode. So send those to us at askyourpastors at christianfellowship.com, and we will see you next time. God bless.